Hi everybody. Today I want to talk about the coronavirus. I think this is very important because there's so much uh, information out there. And as usual, I want to distill some science, break it down to something that's very digestible and also empower you with this information as a community that I think does suffer from chronic disease and you can make some good decisions and really understand what all the hype is about out there. Uh, given my background as an emer emergency, academic emergency physician, uh, I do have some qualifications to kind of understand what's going on here. Given the number of cases that we have thus far worldwide, it was clear one week ago that this was going to be a pandemic. And what does this really mean? As we sit here and speculate about how bad is it going to get and uh, so forth, it is clear that the trajectory of the numbers are not really stoppable in the sense that they will be a pandemic. And that essentially is mathematics, not prophecy. What are those numbers? I'm gonna use a really wide range here to get some accuracy, but again, this could change. At this time, we're looking at somewhere between, and again, I'm using wider range of numbers just to capture what I'm trying to capture. 40 to 70% of the world's population will be infected. 40 to 70 million of the world's population uh, will be affected by death by this. Uh, the death rate appears to be two to 3%. The number of people that do get infected seem to be at this time between the age of 49 and 56 or 57. That's infected, not death. It appears at this time from the data that's out there, the ones that are at highest risk seem to be the elderly and uh, those with suffering with chronic disease and that are immunocompromised disease. These are the numbers that we have. This number and trajectory, like I said, is just pure mathematics. In addition, the span of time we're talking about, I use wider intervals maybe than some of the data out there, but I wanna capture it. I'm gonna say these numbers are gonna happen somewhere between 12 and 42 to 46 months. It's important to know those numbers and what they mean. When I say, uh, two to three percent of the people are infected uh, are going to die i'm sorry and about 40 to 70 million are going to die across the planet before you panic really put it into some perspective okay two to three percent 40 to 70 million compared to the seasonal flu at this time that's a much higher number uh but again it's an extrapolation compared to the uh, bird flu virus that we had some years back, that number is much lower. So, you know, you can think of it as a really bad influenza pandemic, okay? You know, you can think about the 1918 Spanish flu that spread across the world and had 50 million dead. That itself is just purely numbers and you need to understand what it means. When I say 49, uh, one of the reasons this virus is gonna spread in this fashion is because most people that get affected by this virus aren't going to be that sick. And so that, inc that increases the rate of spreading of the disease. So keep in mind, a lot of people are going to get sick from this, but not that many people are going to die when I say the number 40 to 70 million. So that really should really put some perspective on what's going on here. Public health measures and what they're trying to do here is a concept you might be seeing in the news right now. One of them is called flattening the curve. All that is is the following. Uh, uh, the way the disease is gonna spread is a function of time. And this is just mathematics. So the number of people of, uh, affected, which is on this long axis this way, and over time. And what you get is a bell curve, and it sort of does this. And flattening the curve means flattening the bell curve so that less number of people are infected if you can get 
a lower number of infections, you will have a lower number of severe sickness just by function of the number that are infected, and you will have a lower number of deaths. So that's one of the concepts that's important for you to understand. When you see all of the public health measures that are being taken, all of the points in all of those measures are to flatten the curve. One of the concepts or constructs that has shown, again, mathematics shows this, that really flatten the curve, it's called social distancing. You might see some of that in the media uh, and people talking about it. Social distancing actually works better than sort of the kind of quarantine measures that you've seen in some places because that kind of thing just doesn't work. Social distancing basically means really being conscientious about where you're walking, how close you're getting to other people, and how much you spend time outside. Essentially, in some sort of way, it means self-quarantining. When you do the social distancing measures, which is trying to stay at home and away from people and in public places as much as possible, and if you can, don't go to work, it really decreases the infection rate and as a byproduct of that, you're gonna get decreased death rates and decreased severe illness. Some basic measures that you can take that you should really, really, really take seriously is basically washing your hands often. And that really means to get your hand under the sink, use soap, use warm water, and spend at least 45 seconds to one minute washing your hands. Don't touch your mouth. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your eyes. <clears throat> Personally, when you're at home or by yourself or those people that are really close around you, if you have a fever and a cough, you need to go to your local agency, however that's set up, and report that and be and understand that you, know, you may have the virus. So having said that, keep in mind that there's a wide spectrum the way the virus presents itself, just like the flu. For example, you may just have congestion and you may just have very, very, very mild flu-like symptoms and that can be the virus. So it doesn't necessarily mean if you have a fever and a cough. Uh, as far as things you can do every day to protect yourself and for you guys to understand is that we're dealing with the community, the substance abuse community, the intravenous drug user community that is at high risk for not only getting the virus, again, because of the lifestyles that are led, but also at a high risk for severe disease and potentially fatality. And this is because we're dealing with a chronic disease population that depending on where you're at in your addiction, you may be immunocompromised and in a decreased fighting state simply because not only of your uh, d drug use, but the lifestyle you're leading. You may be malnourished. You may be living on the street. You may be sharing a house, apartment, any kind of dwelling with multiple people. All of these factors contribute to you staying well. They also contribute to you seeking the help that you need when you need it. So having said all of that, whatever your local circumstances are, please, please, please try and stay as clean as possible yourself. Take some of these measures that I've told you, such as hand washing, basic hygiene, social distancing. Take these very seriously. Try to stay very well hydrated. Try to keep your nutritional status high and let this thing pass. One more thing that I wanna comment on that's a little bit of uh, my opinion. Uh, the virus, the spread of it, uh, the way this is gonna sort of manifest itself in the United States and the planet, that's just mathematics. And that's a natural state of the virus. It's not a big deal. Uh, well, it is, I mean, it's, it is what it is. But my biggest concern is the, our intellectual, physical and organizational institutions and their capacity to respond to what's going on. And number two, the general reaction of the public to social media and some of the news that's out there. That's, and finally, the economic impact of very, very knee-jerk reactions to this pandemic. 
those are more concerning for me in the way they're gonna have an effect on social disruption and the spread and worsening of the virus in people. So the take home message here is pretty simple, guys. Hand washing, be, don't touch your face, don't touch your mouth, be careful of a fever, social distancing, understand that the substance abuse community is a vulnerable community in a time like this. Please help each other out, educate yourself, don't panic, don't be reactionary, and this will pass and everyone will be fine. More importantly, for you guys, please get yourself into treatment and during this time, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you all soon. Take care.